Hey everybody, we're back and we're going to talk about the wing flap and aileron development on the C-130 I built a long time ago. So the wing was one of the hard things, but by far not the hardest just because I was able to CAD everything out. It was a styrofoam hot wire cut wing that was sheeted in balsa. Those are all the plywood hard points. So any place a, like a nacelle or a flap uh, point connected, it was plywood. I just uh, glued all my uh, uh, sheeting together with CA and then used Gorilla Glue to attach it to the styrofoam. And uh, if you wet the Gorilla Glue right, it works perfect. And uh, it's the greatest way to do it. Uh, it did take a lot of time to get the sheeting on this wing because it was a big wing. But uh, as the plane came together, I needed to make sure that my design for the flaps worked right. So you can see the flap hard points in there and the tracks that the flaps would run on and I'll go into that in detail in a little bit and uh, I needed to make sure I had places to get servo wires through the wing and uh, just to make sure that you know I could get to all the different points in the wing where servos were for the flaps this is the uh, aileron how I uh, you know bent the wood with a little bit of Windex and water and uh, the aileron design I've done on all of my airplanes uh, it's very much like a real aircraft you do need to have a good servo that has no slop uh, because you can get uh, flutter having this short of a moment arm that actually turns the servo. I mean the servo that turns the uh, push and pulls the aileron. And you just need to really, really make sure that you uh, make sure all this is really tight and strong because you don't have a large moment arm. You've only got about three quarters of an inch off the axis of the aileron where it pivots. And uh, I love burying it this way because it, it, you don't have all the stuff hanging out of the bottom of the wing. I always make my own aluminum push rod because I'm just afraid of, of flutter. That is a high torque servo of around 160 ounces. Again, just to make sure that that aileron can't flutter. And uh, I just love this type of a design on ailerons. And I've done this on a lot of my airplanes and never had a problem. And if you want to counterbalance the yellow around, you can, but on this, I it's not a high-speed airplane. So here's my flap design <clears throat> that I got a lot of haters telling me would never work, and it actually worked really good. It's been used on two other airplanes that are not mine, um, but uh, and they were flying, or are flying, and uh, one's a P-38 Lightning, and the other one, I can't remember what it is right now, but this is just rock-solid design. The thing is, is you just need to have a way to cut this out. I cut the parts out of um, flat plate uh, phenolic <clears throat> at the time because I, I should have made it out of carbon fiber that I was going to lay, lay up myself. But, you know, this is five, seven years ago, five or six years ago. And it just worked flawlessly. One thing you can do with a servo that's digital and programmable, you can get 180 degrees of movement. So you're actually locking the flap up and you're locking the flap down. The mid travel points, there is a lot of force on the servos, but you know, I had a lot of servos. This is me taking the phenolic plate and uh, uh, basically cutting the part out and testing to make sure my uh, little um, shafts could slide through there. This is the first test of the first mock up, and I was really pleased that considering I'm just screwing around here, just getting to know the geometry that it worked so well. Um, right out of the gate so basically it's a plywood rib there but then the phenolic uh, part um, just bolted right onto it this is another test of the actual center section of the wing and it worked really really good so as you can see the geometry all worked um, I actually put lead weights on all of these to make sure that there was no binding in the track and um, uh, the guy who put this on his P-38, it's been working flawlessly for about three or four years now because he did it after my C-130. And uh, the, the thing that I liked the most about trying to create these flaps were I didn't want to get the full deflection that the real C-130 has because most RC airplanes don't even need flaps to fly good. And sometimes they're problematic because people don't know how to trim the airplane out when the flaps go down. They're like, why is my plane ballooning up? Real airplanes do that, everybody. You always have to be on your trim on, on the on the stick or the um, uh, uh, yoke when you're putting your flaps down. Uh, this is another little test of just getting the uh, geometry all set up just to make sure uh, it's working with all the different servos that will be in the wing. 
Now, as you can see, this is way before I sheeted the wing. This was early development of the tracks just to make sure they worked. Now, here's the wing sheeted and me starting to test them. The flaps were pretty um, flimsy until I got them glassed, and I did it with three-quarter ounce cloth. And uh, believe it or not, just that and the resin soaking into the balsa wood uh, made them completely stiff and strong. And I was really pleased with how it worked. And um, all together, there were two servos on the inboard flap, so that's four. And there were three on the outboard, that's six. So, you know, right there, you know, I had ten servos just to do the flaps. And then one servo to do each aileron. So right there was 12 servos just to do the wing. And everything worked. I mean, as you can see here, I was really, really just completely tickled to death with how good this worked. And uh, it is interesting, though, when you do try to do things like this where all the haters come out and say it will never work. And, you know, I'm, I'm really lucky, everybody. Um, I do a lot of design to make sure my stuff works. I just don't throw it together and go fly it. And I've been really lucky that 99.9% .9 of everything I've designed well, actually, 100% of everything I've designed has flown right if it's gotten into the air and I didn't sell it. But uh, getting there, um, I've had a lot of failures. But by the time it's ready to fly, I've been really lucky, knock on wood, that everything's always worked. But, um, yeah, the guy who bought this off me is putting turbines in it. And uh, it sounds like he's got a little bit of a problem right now getting the plumbing to work out to the engines. But he feels really confident he can get it done. And when this goes to fly, everybody, um, it's going to be awesome. Crazy thing is, his turbines didn't add any more weight than my big electric motors. So uh, he is going to carry a little bit more fuel. But my batteries weigh about as much as the kerosene is going to be in the middle of the airplane. So uh, the airplane all up is going to weigh about 52 to 54 pounds with a 160-inch wing. So it's still going to have a really nice wing loading. And uh, so, um, but he's a real private guy. He used to do a lot of threads and stuff on RC groups, but the haters came out and he just said, screw it. And he just quit posting everything he does. So uh, just because of a couple of haters, he pretty much ditched putting any of his builds out on the internet until they're done. And uh, as you can see, this is just sexy as hell, everybody. So I hope you all appreciate my videos, and I hope you understand why I'm reposting a lot of these, because people just said, hey, I can't find them. You know, it was like five years ago. Where are they? And I have 300 videos on YouTube, so it's hard to find. Rock on, everybody. Have a great day. Be safe.